Hey, what's going on everyone? King here, back for another video. Uh, it's been some time since I actually made a video uh, while I'm talking in my office and uh, uh, expressing my experience as well as sharing information with the, uh, the status of the lawsuit and everything else pertaining to me and my family and is yes, trying to resolve the legal issues to their property. Uh, so what I'm going to do in this video is share some videos that I recorded previously um, last year and uh, up until present date, which is um, June 16th, 2024. So I'm going to play these videos and then give my thoughts on the videos. Uh, some of the videos you will see me speaking, uh, some of the videos you will see me walk around the property and things are happening in the background. And there'll be other videos that, that uh, where I'm hosting a meeting. And yeah, I, I will let the videos play for a few minutes or so, uh, a few seconds or so, and to give my thoughts on the matter and um, give everybody an update to what's going on. And uh, yeah, so let's get into the video. Thanks for watching. What's going on everyone? King here, back for another video. So today, um, it's Saturday, the 16th of September, 2023, um, and today is that uh, there's going to be an air property meeting. Um, so me, my mother, and other members of the family are going to this meeting uh, to hear what's going on uh, with the property, even despite the the legal actions that are, that are currently going on. Um, and when I was in Thailand on vacation, I just got back a week, about a week ago or so, uh, that um, emails have been sent out uh, basically telling members of my family and others that not to entertain me, um, that the board uh, controls the information or make it seem like they control the information, that their information is more valuable, holds more weight than information that I share with people. Uh, and so I came back and got to deal with that. I uh, did meet with my, my attorney, or at least her, my attorney's uh, paralegal, in preparation for, um, you know, up and coming legal actions tried to resolve the air property dispute, the, the, the complaints against the board and, and others that are named as uh, defendants in this case. So that's the plan for today. Um, got to travel there, I sit in the meeting, see what's going on, speak at the meeting, speak up at the meeting. Hopefully other members of my family will do the exact same thing. We'll, we'll challenge the board and challenge others to the validity of the board, to the validity of their actions and everything else, to who are heirs and who are not heirs uh, prior to um, us, you know, uh, meeting up next week. Because next week is we have a mediation. Uh, I'm calling it a hearing, but a mediation, right, uh, where all parties involved and gather at one place to try to resolve the issues before actually going to court. So this is like the first step um, in trying to re resolve um, the legal legal dispute. So we see how it goes. And so when I get to the actual meeting location, um, uh, I will start recording again and and uh, give my thoughts on who's present and and what's the what's the vibes there. I know it's not gonna it's gonna be pretty pretty intense, but again, you know, I document I'm documenting these. Uh, my experiences and things I'm going through. So you, the viewers, if you and your family have air property, you, you can understand, you know, what to do and what not to do and how things can go, right? Good, bad, ugly, and different. So, all right. So I'll see you at the meeting location. Hey, what's going on, everyone? So this is a continuation video from today. Um, so we had the meeting and you know <laughs> they had their agenda which is fine but when they started bringing up topics i said they as in the board started bring up topics making comments about stuff everybody asking questions you know i chimed in and, and said my point but of course they try to, they're trying to silence me right i mean the secretary tried to shut me down by saying how'd you get a mic this ain't your meeting how'd you get a mic i got it I brought my own mic by my own microphone because last meeting they tried to control the meeting by not allowing me to speak as as much but giving everybody else free the free opportunity a longer opportunity to, to speak about whatever topics were, were, were being discussed 
right? I mean, the meeting minutes was so jacked up that it didn't even cover, I would say, 50% of the meeting. Like, the motions that were made by the where made the motions were not identified. Who seconded the motion? What was the what was the the outcome of the vote? You know, it's just it's just crazy. You know, it's just crazy that that the board removing from my position as assistant secretary, but yet the board can't function in property. They can't function the way that they need to be functioning. Per the bylaws, per Robert's rules of order, that <laughs> the secretary is saying that oh, not everything needs to be including in the minutes. Just the just the main topics, main points, main you're right, but if you're going to set the minutes, dash the meat and potatoes of what was discussed during during the the meeting minutes should be included. If someone's trying to set the meeting minutes, if you if you're reading the meeting minutes and someone has a question or comment, it should be included in the minutes of who made a question, right? Who made a motion? Who seconded the motion? And so forth and so forth. The same with the treasury report. You got a treasury report. Okay, treasury report was given by the so and so so and so. But yet, it's not included in the minutes. How is that appropriate? How is that the proper way of doing things? I guarantee you, I, I look forward to present all of this, right, whether it be to at the, the mediation or to the hearing. But uh, stay tuned. There'll be more to um, this video. Okay. So, yeah, what you just saw was the video that um, I recorded Back in September 2023, um, to be exact, in September 16, 2023. So that was a Saturday, the day that there was uh, a, a state hearing, I'm sorry, a state meeting. Um, and, you know, it was a few days before uh, we had the mediation, which was, I believe, on the um, Tuesday, a Tuesday for uh, trying to resolve the, the legal issues or come to some kind of agreement. Um, uh, as well as try to resolve the, the legal issues, the case, the lawsuit. Um, so we did meet, but you know, that, that day, that day of the meeting was, it was, it was just crazy how the board conducted the meeting and tried to silence me. Like they've been constantly trying to silence me, um, and not listening not only to me or, or allow me to ask questions, make comments about the information they're presenting, but also for other family members who were present. Like, I, uh, I believe I'm their third cousin, right? So their second cousin to my mother and first cousin to my grandmother. They came to the meeting and wanted to ask questions, wanted to know what's going on, make statements, and they basically adjourned the meeting um, due to comments were made. And they actually threatened to, to adjourn the meeting as the day as the president uh, started to adjourn the meeting um, again when I'm asking questions they didn't like me recording the meeting um, didn't like a, my cousin like again I'm the third cousin that's my, my third cousin uh, asking if everybody at the meeting was an heir and that sparked that sparked everything going on after that question and you know all the attitude negativity the negative attitude and, and discontent and discord and you know all the all the hatred and jealousy wherever else would was aimed at me like i'm it like i'm the culprit like i'm at fault for all this like it's re it was just ridiculous um and then you know i did i didn't uh finish recording that that on that day but you know again the following week on the 19th we had a mediation and so it was me and my mother uh our, our attorney and the other party's attorneys, and not everybody showed up, because there were some individuals that were our pro se defendants, and they they didn't show up, and some did show up. Uh, at least two or three uh, showed up. Um, and the you know the the board and the, the pro se defendants and attorneys was all in one room, and then there was my mother's brother and her sister uh, and their attorney in one room. So there was three rooms occupied by you know, three different or four different entities or, or parties in the case. And then the mediator was going between all three rooms trying to see what was what, right? And so at the end, of, see about towards the end of the day, um, afternoon, probably about 2.33 o'clock is when, uh, actually before that, he, he the mediator called in the lawyers 
uh, tried to reach some kind of agreement and then it came out and uh, so we had a conversation with our attorney you know he expressed his thoughts on the, on the mediation and thoughts on how things are going so I don't think we're going to have a, a resolution right and I don't know if that was a signal or not or what the what um, trying to give us a hint to say don't sign or don't do this or don't agree to it but when we saw the the mediation terms or the, the terms of the agreement the the document that was that was typed up you know it's like this is not what we asked for it, it, it was somewhat one-sided but in a way um it it, it offered a pathway to resolution uh, granted it wasn't all what we wanted it wasn't in our favor um it probably wasn't in, it's probably more in the other parties favor in the board's favor but one thing I w part of the mediation and this is all on online the the uh, that well it's, it's now been uploaded to the the case file online um, so anyway I can go see this public public information at this point but the mediation was that I'm back on the board right I'm back on the board where you know temporarily back on the board as a board member but my vote counts and now the board can't make decisions or should not make decisions without me being included right so spending up money um, that requires a vote uh, uh, anything of significance that requires a vote they can't do it and um, well that was a plan anyway that was what's supposed to happen um, and a few other things that 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 were mentioned in the mediation that was not supposed to happen like cutting up timber clearing of land cutting timber um, uh, moving trailers on the property uh, the verbiage in there says any new uh, mobile trailers that, are, that were voted on are to be stayed and to the legal term to be stayed means to prevent or to halt to stop so that was supposed to happen as well but um, that's not the case uh, so again that was in September 2019 sorry September September 19 2023 and you know since then we, we did have uh, a board meeting that took place in December of 2023 and I got records of that I, re I recorded that meeting too and other things had, had taken place that I was unaware of like they paid the taxes without having a board meeting without discussing this during a board meeting and I, and I sent the email like how are you are conducting business and I'm not part of that conversation how are, how are you how is a board or whoever on the board is is paying taxes and doing that third and there's no record of a decision to pay the tax or the action to pay the taxes on a certain day. They, all that should be recorded, right, in in a meeting. They're not. They weren't hearing me. Uh, so then, family members contacted me and 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 wanted trying to resolve all these issues. And I tried to meet with them, and and you know it was all one sided. It was, you know, my mother's siblings versus me and my mother. You know, it's like, it's crazy. It's just like how family can't even cooperate. You know, these are the same ones that couldn't even properly bear their own mother. But yet, me and my mother are the culprit. Me and my mother are the bad guys. And we would do nothing but try to help our family, you know, monetarily and support and everything else. And we're the bad guys. We're the, we're the, we're the problem child, children of this family. Like, we're trying to help. And it just, it, it, it turns around and it, you know, just falls apart because, you know, whatever reasons they think that, you know, would it be jealousy, would it be envy, would it be whatever. I, I don't know. But, um, and so then January 20th, and, and I will show clips of this too, uh, um, where had a meeting with the family. And this is to be like both heirs of the family, both sides of my family, the James side and the Cox side, me and my family to um, bring together to try to resolve uh, the issues, understand the lawsuit, explain the lawsuit. I brought this in for heirs property to some other staff members to talk to my family and they were hostile towards them. I said, members of my family who came there already intent to be argumentative, to be divisive. Um, to be hostile, be nasty, disrespectful. They already started. They they even let them finish getting their in, their intro. And saying, well, I got questions. I got questions. I want to know this. I want to know that. So disrespectful. Again, I got all on video. Granted, it's like very good quality um, because the way the 
the um, I didn't have microphones all throughout the room, so couldn't could pick up everybody's um, words and what they were saying. But for the most part, uh, it, you could tell from just from the um, the video that it was it was they were being decisive and be argumentative and 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 being hostile towards us. So the, the meeting was disrupted. We couldn't even have a a positive meeting. That there was there was. They they were not coming there for good reasons. They're going there for bad reasons. Um, but I'll I'll show that too. So, but you know that meaning was to have a conversation with family over you know discuss who was heirs to watch James, who were not heirs to watch James. And reason being, and, and I can I can show this. Matter of fact, let me let me flip the script. Let me set up. What do you set up? And I'm gonna show you uh, what I'm talking about. As far as why I decided to call that meeting after talking with other family members um, to let's have a conversation to understand who are heirs to the family, heirs to original owners of the property on our side of the family, right? The James side and the Cox side, and to discuss the civil action as to what needs to be accomplished, right? So let me prep that and then I'll continue this video. Okay, so what you're looking at here is actually the uh, the case files that are online. Um, again, this is all public knowledge, right? So you can see that there's a lot of things happening in with this case that you see lists of lists of names there, lists of actions that are that are happening uh, in the form of a motion. So, so in these individuals, uh, I believe there's like 19 to 20 individuals that have filed these a motion to intervene. Well, they have filed it, but they haven't served this their motions onto us and to other parties. They just went to the court and uh, filed these motions without really notifying all parties involved and doing a proper way. Granted, they themselves do not have an attorney, so they're doing it themselves. They're, they're asking the court, basically, to intervene into the case to state their claim to the property, which is actually part of the, the media agreement. However, that you know, maybe the court will give them some leniency as far as them not having an attorney and allowing this to happen. But for the most part, we were not we not serve their motions, even though it's been updated or uploaded to um, th this case file online. Um, so there's a record of it, regardless of the fact. There's a record of it. But yeah, so so there's a list of individuals here that are asking to intervene. Um, into the case to be so they can state their claim and, and, and interest to the the property, uh, and then there's a third party who who filed a petition to establish heirship and interest in the property, which I hope the court will smack it down, will deny it, and hold that dude accountable because this is this is the gentleman right here that uh, you know used the racial slur directed towards me. You know, and, and, and attacking my character and, and saying that my ego, right, <laughs> that my ego is the reason for all of this and yada, 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 yada. But he's been silent since then. He Since I responded to his his petition and, and counterclaimed uh, his petition and, and sent a counterclaim against him for damages for uh, his actions and the things that he said, he's been pretty much quiet. Um, and it's crazy that... That this dude actually thinks that he's gonna win, that that him upon this motion uh, or sorry petition to intervene and everything else, like big picture, it's crazy that people do things without thinking things clearly, even when they have an attorney or they don't have an attorney. Like there's so there's so much in inconsistencies as well as the information and how things are are playing out that. I can't believe that it's gotten this far, that, that this case is still ongoing, that, you know, I think um, it, it, realistically, honestly, if I had a different attorney, if we had a different attorney, if we went a different route with a different attorney, that attorney would not allow this to go on, depending on the attorney. So that's why I made a video, I made the, the video about uh, choosing the right attorney or understanding what it means to hire an attorney and having that attorney try your case or represent you in a case or, or any kind of action. So it, it, it speaks volumes. Um, and But regardless of the fact, you know, we're here where we're here. Um, we're at where we're at. And, and 
I'm trying to make the most of it. But, you know, these type of individuals, uh, this dude, to be exact, is, is filing this petition to intervene or to make sure that him and his family have interest in property when they didn't do that in 2011. They didn't get involved in 2011. They didn't get involved in 2017. And there's there's other members of their family who were involved where I would simply name them as a non-heir defendant and they had the opportunity to provide their family tree, but they didn't. I don't know is if it was because of their, their lack of, I don't know, knowledge, lack of understanding, their incompetence, or their their they they did so um, as as a protest. I mean that they didn't prevent they didn't present their family tree in the form of protest or against the case against me intervening me not intervening but me getting involved and suing them because you know if it wasn't if, if I was not involved who would be involved it would have been my mother's brothers and sisters and I mean, quite possibly my mother and my grandmother their mother right but. I discovered the lawyer. I found the lawyer. I introduced the lawyer to my to my family. I'm the one that that, that forked the money to pay for the attorney. They pay for the legal the legal process, acquire a title, and you know with the with the understanding that family was going to reimburse me. You know that it wasn't supposed to be me leading the charge. It was supposed to be me helping them lead the charge to get things done. But you see that blew up in my face. Right, they stabbed me in the back and they blew up in my face, and they turn, they turn against me, and my mother, and they turn fam members of our family against me, and my mother. So it's ridiculous. But where are we? Are we're here? We're here, you know. So, um, but yeah, he he filed that petition to establish which is an air uh, airship, and I basically uh, rebuttaled uh, against his petition, and and he, you know, has been silent since then, but. You will see here too that um, I filed a motion to enforce the settlement agreement, and here's why, right? Because they continue to, as a day, the board continues to double down on their lies and misinformation, and and everyone else. Like there's been countless emails sent out from day one when when the board was put on notice. They were served. The board and and other parties in the case were served that. The amount of emails, mass emails that have been sent out, just defaming, defaming me and my mother, just just bashing me and my mother, talking trash about me and my mother, uh, sharing false information or information that's not accurate, that's one-sided, misinformation, disinformation. Um, and so, you know, even after we had the agreement, the mediated agreement, uh, what's supposed to transpire as me being on the board, not cutting the timber, um, uh, not moving new trailers on the property and so forth, yada, 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 yada. The board has acted in total dominance. They, they, they have violated the agreement and I tried to get it, try to get the, the agreement voided out. So, well, if the board is not going to adhere to the agreement, then it should be voided out. So, um, again, I called a family meeting, right? The, the members of my family who were on the board came there, you know, being disruptive, being disrespectful, um, hostile with hostile intent. And then um, they were supposed to have a meeting, a state meeting, in March of this year, March 2024. Well, the president, who was present at the, the mediated agreement, at the mediation, um, canceled the meeting because there was an issue where, where um, individuals were on the property clearing land to prepare for a trailer. So, again, part of the media agreement was the timber was not be cut, so no clearing of land, and no new trails on the property. But they already violated that agreement. Two terms of the agreement were violated. So we called the sheriff, had the sheriff respond, and the sheriff couldn't make any arrests or do anything other than document for civil purposes. So that's what happened. I I took photos and videos, and and you see, I actually will play it where they um, try to intimidate me. So let me go ahead. And switch it over to uh, to showing the videos of me walking the land in, in, in presence of the sheriff and, and seeing the, what what they did, and then uh, I'll come back and talk about it. But for this part here, it's pretty much that you know I asked the court to enforce the agreement and hold the board and, and other parties responsible um, for what has transpired up up until this point. Like we're not, we're this close again to. 
the finish line. We're this close to having these little issues resolved and having a hearing. Um, so I, I think it's going to be in our favor, but who knows? I mean, I'm going to present through my lawyer all the information, all the facts of the case, all the evidence, the videos, the photos, the documents, and hopefully the cards will be in our favor, right? Um, but yeah, let's get into the video. So, yeah, what you're seeing right now is basically there's a sheriff talking to members of the the gentleman and his and his family members um, about them clearing land and he got a problem with me having my camera and, and go recording so one of their family members made the comment that oh I can record too I'm gonna gather evidence too and so in a form of intimidation tried to like what what like okay whatever so she's following me she's walking behind me recording recording me as I'm recording the evidence like taking photos that's her right there you know, seem to be like doing something like on your phone, like just the, the ignorance of people. The the you know, like they're uh -huh. they're doing something. Like you so mad? Well, hey, you should be on our property. And they're, they're claiming that they had permission from the board. But again, there's a mediated agreement that says that there's supposed to be no clearing of land, regardless of what they think and feel. And so you see, she's like getting closer and running her mouth, but that's okay. You know, in a second lot. Under South Carolina law, it's not against the, it's not against the law to record, <laughs> and you know whether it be video or audio, it's not against the law. You know, especially I'm doing it in front of in, in in front of the law enforcement with the knowledge of the law enforcement present. So again, it's not against the law. Otherwise, I'd have been advised that hey, you can't record. But again, this is private property. You know, this is this is not public property. And if it was public, I still have the right to record, and nothing they can do about it. Just like I can't stop her from recording me, but you know she didn't need to you know add the add the commentary and make the the, the comments uh you know a, a from a protest of me recording but regardless of the fact you know um you can see there that here's where they clear they clear and the gentleman the gentleman had a you know had a the bulldozer or whatever you call it backhoe and you know a a saw you know to the chainsaw to cut down the trees in which again the media agreement says no cutting of timber no clearing of land in a sense so they broke the, they broke the they violated the media agreement so they need to be held accountable and 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 all heirs own every tree on that on that property this this is not this is not uh somewhere where the board owns the rights to the timber all heirs own the rights to the timber so if timber is cut down Right, that that has monetary value. That has repercussions. Like all heirs own the timber equally. At this point, anyways, because there has not been a a a, a division of um, of the land and rights to the to the property. So equally, we all own the, the property until the court says otherwise. So if it, if it, if a tree costs a thousand dollars, then we lost money in a sense that the air probably lost money you know how no matter how big or small it is you know if if an acre of land was cleared of, of was timber that that's money you know if there was a hundred trees on that that acre lot then we essentially lost a hundred thousand dollars right if a math is mathing um but so clearing clearing of land to put mobile trailers on the properties is, is straight up ridiculous. What even um, allowing other heirs to to want to be notified and to be informed of what's going on and, and have a voice again because the board is doing what they want to do. You know, again, they're doubling down on their their lies and misinformation and everything else. You see, I'm walking up back up to the the law enforcement officers and and you know they're they're offended that i'm recording you know they got issues with what me recording but i'm within my right if they're within their right to to say what they want to say and they, they can come to this land and do what they want to do it doesn't matter doesn't does not matter they can get mad all they want you, you, you see you said like you don't give permission use the image whatever dude who are you who are you you on you on air property land and you're not even the air and, and we're going to deal with that but um i'm gonna end this video right here and, and move on okay I want to show one last thing I, and, I, and I talked about this how in the was on the uh, website 
the case file that's online um, and the people were filing their motion to intervene and, and petitions to establish airship. So two of the defendants um, who were on the board or actually named in the uh, lawsuit um, dealing with you know the, the actions of the board and, and everything else. So they named as a party in the case, a, a, a def um, defendants in the case. So, the way of their attorney, um, in, re in, in response to the motion to enforce the agreement, um, and I think this is a last ditch effort to try to, you know, um, justify, I, I don't know, the, 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 their attorney acting like he's doing something, and, but I feel like he's just wasting our time and not really representing them in the, in the, with the best interests of his clients, right? He's not really doing. Um, his duty as their counsel um, and ensuring that they will have some kind of favorable outcome in this case. But you see here that uh, he's filed a, a, a petition, a summons, there's a summons, and there's a petition to establish airship and interest in the property. I mean, this is all online. And, you know, again, the title of this video is they're doubling down on lies and misinformation, right? So here is this gentleman. You see his name there. I gotta mention his name, but saying that as unnamed heir to the Washington James estate, he was named as or listed as a John Doe, a, a fictitious name used for the true name of all unknown persons claiming any right, title, or interest in the property that's subject of this litigation. Blah 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 blah. Not even true. He, he can claim it all day, but what the kicker is like what I, I just don't understand why. I mean, I probably get it to some extent because the, the lawyer has to do something. The lawyer has to do something and maybe it's what they wanted to do and maybe he explained uh explained the options to them but they probably went with this option right wrong and different i don't know i wasn't there i'm not i'm not a, a client he's not my attorney so i can only assume right i only guess based on what i know about this case um but the the inconsistencies again the inconsistencies of information that it was the 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 uh, inaccuracies of the information they're not even a word i gotta look, look it up but the information is not truthful it's not the facts are not accurate the information is not accurate it's misleading and it's, it's incomplete and it's just completely just wrong because especially when there's there's already documents out there stating the facts of the case or there's information out there right um um, showing what was the truth, you know, the, the, the rightful, the right information, accurate information in regards to the property, in regards to the deeds, and what in the chain of title for the property, right? Because when, when land is bought and sold, there's a chain of title. It, it will show that, hey, land was purchased on this date, right? it was surveyed or it was purchased, it was, it was sold for whatever reason, it went to, it, you know, Due to whatever reasons, it went to probate and blah blah whatever. There's a chain of titles showing people who owned it, whether it be a person, a corporation, or some of that sort, right? If if someone took a loan out against a property, it should be documented. Okay, so now that I said, you know, I'm not gonna read everything in this petition, but just to hit the, hit the highlights and then I'm gonna wrap this video up. So number three, it says the petitioner claims and presents evidence that he's a tenant of, excuse me, Eli Allen, one of the 18 original property purchases in this matter. False, already false. One, I'm not claiming he's not, I'm not saying he's not a descendant of Eli Allen, but Eli Allen is one of 20. There was 20 original owners of the property. And here they only list the one property. They don't even say the amount of acreage was in our property, right? It says there, please see attached copy of the original deed to the state property property dated December 14th 1898 and exhibit a there were two tracts of land that was purchased again I talked about this before in my other videos this, this is even document in a letter from a law firm in 2011 so again I have a hard time understanding how an attorney can misrepresent the facts of this case to include the the titles for the property when it's already been documented right because when you go to court, you can say whatever you want to say in the streets. You can say whatever you want to say on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, YouTube, just like I'm doing now. But when you go to court, the court is going to be interested in the facts. The court is not going to be interested in your feelings, your thoughts, unless the lawyer asks you, hey, 
based on what you know, what is your what is your opinion on the matter? Okay, fine, fair enough. But this time about facts. He's 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 referring to this this document as evidence as Exhibit A, and in, in a statement, the state the information that he's using is incorrect because there's not 18. There's 20 original owners of the property. You can count them. I can count them out. There's 20 and. If you're saying Eli Allen was only one of 18 private owners of said uh, 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 deeds of property on December 14, 1898, he's wrong because there was two tracts of land. There were two tracts of land, track A and track B, and each track has its own acreage. And it's all been documented. So this is what I'm talking about when the inconsistencies, right? The, the information is not accurate. It's not, it's not factual. It's not truthful. It's misleading. Right? It's not right, and this is contained in a document, a petition that was served upon me and my mother uh, uh, as clients to my, our attorney. And we had to respond to this. We respond to it. We have 30 days to respond to this document, but yet it's inaccurate. There's a lot of, a lot of inconsistencies in here, and I, hopefully, I hope that the, the, the court would, 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 would deny this petition and, and, and listen to the facts like we already went through the process to quiet a title so really this is pointless again this is this is another ditch effort another effort by their attorney to say he's doing something that's that's my opinion and i could be wrong but in, in the petition it goes on talking about the jurisdiction which is you know whatever whatever but here you know the facts petition resides in conway south carolina his great grandparents blah 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 uh was born on a property Brother born on property, his mother resides on the property, so forth. Listen, again, I talked about this in another video. Being born or raised on a property, living on a property, don't make you no heir. Under South Carolina law, there's no such thing. If that's the case, then, 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 you know, the ex slaves or whoever their mother that was born and raised, right? Not just raised, but they were slaves. So that's all they know. They were born on the property, they lived on the property, they worked the property, they worked the land. They were slaves, so if that's the case, then every ex-slave, every sin of ex the sin of ex slave, every ex slave will have rights to this land. That yeah, let's go back let's go back a hundred, two hundred years and give them their rights to the property. That's what he's saying here, trying to say that well 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 my, my great grandparents were born and raised on this property. That don't that don't matter. That doesn't matter because people come and go. Lands bought and sold every day. That's not going to matter. This is why you have a what chain of title. You clear the title. You clear the title before your land is 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 bought and sold. It has to be a clear title to the property, saying that hey, are there any owners to the property? Is anybody can come and challenge this uh, uh, transaction? This land being bought and sold. If not, then you clear the title. Has to be done. Has to be done. Is is by law. Is by Legal procedure to make sure that 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 the, the land being sold, there is no legal issues. That, that nobody can come back and question the sale of the land or purchase of the land or property, real estate, right? It goes it goes on and on and on and on. Again, I'm not gonna get into too in depth with it, but the information is is, is incorrect, man. Like. Here it is again. We're under we're under the facts of the case, man. And this is so basic, and generic that I don't understand how can he make this mistake, right? Number eleven, petitioner's second cousins, Alberta Nolan, Catherine Lester, and Marvin Nolan. Wait a minute, I thought you said that that Alberta Nolan was his mother, but here he is in number eleven saying that the petitioner's second cousin, Alberta Nolan. See, this is what I'm talking about. So the, their 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 attorney can't can't argue that oh that's that's a scrivener's error that the scriber right the whoever whoever typed this document made an error no 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 you serve this document upon me and my mother as 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 Pinkerton in the case right you 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 sign as a, their attorney you sign this document there it is right there right that's the signature. A signature block there. He signed this document and had it served upon us through the courts. So it's filed and registered through the courts. Right? I mean, this 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 version of the of the, the document here was sent to us in an email, right? A 14 email and a letter 
but it's not the one that's stamped with court, but still. This is what I'm referring to. These people are, are doubling down on the lies, the misinformation, right? And they're they're hoping and praying that the court will rule in their favor. And, and it, can't, it can't. It can't be in their favor because it's just, it's just, all, it's just so wrong. It's so wrong on so many levels that it's crazy that, again, we're this far into it, you know, because I could be my mother filed this case, this lawsuit back in 2022. So over two years now. But we hired a lawyer back in 2021 summer of 2021 so for us it's been over th nearly three years three years to be exact going on three years and we're, we're this far into this case and why are these things are going on again it goes back to right choosing the right attorney but it also goes back to you know have that attorney give it give a, a care factor have enough care factor to get things done to do things proper that the attorneys are not um, stringing, stringing you along in, in, in this case along to 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 get a bigger payday because right? because everything everything right is, is being being documented in time they they receive uh, they, they touch the case in some form whether it be receiving a letter receiving a petition receiving notice of something they're they're putting hands on it when not physically physically not putting hands on it but they have to review a document review it they give their time to review something, they're gonna charge it to the game, charge it to your clients, to, to the, their clients, I'm sorry, excuse me. So, I know that's a lot, and this is not a very sexy topic, I get that, I understand that, but hopefully this sheds some light on people that are that are uh, are going through this, have gone through this, I said this is this type of case, dealing with family and, and property, because there's individuals out there right now that, that, that were that we're fighting against a corporation and taking our land, whether it be the county, the state, the city, uh, you know, another person, uh, a, a corporation of some sort, that those that understand the information, all right, have the power of control, as well as the money and influence, right? And and this is great. Me being involved, my mother being involved, and and taking legal action against family and others that might be heirs or who are heirs again it might seem wrong but it, it needs to be done because if it wasn't me and my mother who would it be the county the state a corporation a person a land developer whoever the mother can do the exact same thing and who will be there to stop them who will be there to 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 rally up support to to um raise enough money and awareness to fend them off, right? You know, there's been news stories and news stories here in, in South Carolina and Florida and Georgia and Tennessee, Kentucky and, and Texas, Louisiana of these types of events happening where land developers or the county or a corporation, whoever, is trying to take land, property from common people, normal people who don't have not who don't have the means to fight back, don't have the resources to fight back. The elderly ladies, right? The the, the family that held on to the land has been has been in the name for four hundred years or whatever hundred maximum amount of years, and here it is, they're losing their land because of a technicality or because of predatory means, predatory practices. So how do they fight back? But me and my mother are trying to preserve the property as well as my family interest to the property. Not just our interests, but the family's interests. To hold on to the legacy of our ancestors who were slaves and free men and women who purchased land together, who took, took care of their family before they died, who made sure that their family would have something upon their death. But I digress. I know it's kind of long, again, not sexy topic, but um, I just want to give an update and... Uh, hopefully, you know, give insight to <laughs> what not to do and what to do and, and how to do with things, especially to do with family and others and do with lawyers to understand uh, some of the legal actions that take place in these type of cases. So, again, I thank you for watching, for tuning in. Um, like this video, share this video, and leave a comment. All right, until next video, take care. Peace.